Since I know most people aren't going to watch the full video, I'll stay at the conclusion up front. The regen probably doesn't matter. It's not to say you can't make the buy weaves work for whatever you're doing, just that in general combat situations, you probably won't care about having that extra regen at the cost of capacity. This became a rather lengthy topic in the Ashling Duval Discord, so I thought I'd make a real video crunching the numbers and explaining just how much value you're getting out of that regen rate. First, we need to understand how shields work. Shields protect your hull and modules from damage. As long as your shield is up, you won't take damage. Now, the important takeaway from this is the as long as your shield is up portion. So whether your shield has 1 megajoules of strength or 1000 megajoules of strength, it's still up and it's doing its job. Now we need to understand regen. The way regen in Elite Dangerous works at the time of writing is if your shield is up, you don't passive regen until two seconds have passed since the last time you were shot. If you take damage at any point, you need to wait two seconds to get your passive regen back. The advantage of biweave shields compared to other shields is that they have vastly superior passive regen rates at larger slot sizes. What happens if your shields break? Well, you have two options. One option is to wait until they passively regen back to 50%, at which point they'll come back online and then regen at their passive rate for the rest of them. There is no two-second rule for this. The shields aren't taking damage. Uh, so, for example, a uh, 5C biweaves on an FDL stock has a strength of 379.7. The biweaves have a broken regen rate of 5.63 per second. They need to regen 50% of 379.7, and this will take about 35 seconds. Ironically, this results in a situation where the shields feel like they come back faster on different ships. The same 5C biweaves on a crate 2 have a strength of 238.9. When broken, they will regen in about 21 seconds. Uh, but don't get confused. The regen rate is the same no matter what. You're not getting more shields. You're just getting fewer shields faster. Personally, if I had to guess where the community wisdom on biweaves comes from, I'd guess it's this spot right here. People run ill-sized biweaves on ships that aren't suited to them. This results in that regen feeling faster because you can see the rings come back. And then when they break, that 50% being low, causing the shields to come back faster. Alternatively, you can do a reboot and repair while sitting still and get 50% of your shields back right away. Obviously, the downside is that you can't fire for that time and you're kind of a sitting duck. This takes about 10 seconds plus the 3 seconds to confirm that, yes, you would in fact like to reboot and repair. And what our intrepid viewers may have noticed is that 13 to 15 seconds to get 50% shields is much lower than 35 or 21 seconds to get the same shields. So the conclusion is, the fastest broken shield regen comes from reboot and repair. And yes, I am aware of the meme eagle build. No, we don't care about it because it's not practical. Now we get to the main issue. Which shields are best? You've got three-ish choices. By weaves. These have lower capacity, but higher regen rates. Basic, which are stock, and prismatic. These shields are gated behind power play rating, but they have higher capacity at the cost of regen rate. There are other considerations like power draw and mass, but 
those really aren't part of what we care about today. And the question is, does the regen rate matter? Well, we know how regen rate works, and we know how much damage we can be doing. So why don't we just plug in the numbers? And that's what I did. Before we do anything, we're just going to ignore broken shield regen rate. Because as we mentioned earlier, you can get 50% of your shields back faster by rebooting and repairing. And since it's 50%, the higher your base shield capacity is, the better. And, well, would you look at that? Biweaves are going to be losing that battle. But what about regen during combat? That's got to count for something, right? Here I've compared all the class 4 shields and higher and calculated the amount of time required for you to avoid damage for your shield to regen getting hit by several weapons for one second or in the case of railguns, just getting hit once. I've also added a general regen calc at the bottom of each page. Of course, this sheet is available for everyone if you click the link in the description. So, what do we discover? Alright, so, so what are we looking at here? Uh, so this is my damage calculation sheet. Pretty straightforward. Uh, so, the way it works is you can put in a number of weapons you have here. So, for example, FDL, everyone knows it, right? Four rail guns, one multi cannon. There are no multi cannons here, and this they don't do thermal damage. Uh, so, four rail guns, class two rail guns, they're medium size, right? This will do 111 thermal damage. And here we see how long you have to evade. Uh, to regen back that whole 111 damage. So for crates, that's going to be 37 seconds. In an FDL, uh, 53 seconds. In a Corvette, 27 seconds. Let's just say 37. Well, let's just say 30 seconds or more, most likely. So we can try out some other builds here. Are you in, let's say, a chieftain? Chieftain. Personally, I usually run energy weapons in the smaller slots. Uh, so if you're an Chieftain, let's say three beams, three gimbaled beams, because we're lazy. Uh, and in the medium, let's put a fixed burst. Um, all right, that's gonna do 35, 36 damage in one second. Uh, it's gonna cost you 13 seconds, 18 seconds. Talking tens of seconds, you gotta evade damage. Um, what else can we look at? Um, crate Phantom. Um, not Crate. Uh, crate, crate Mark II. Um, we could be running two. You know, the Crate has very good convergence, so I do highly recommend fixed weapons for those. Uh, two medium slots. We can put in, let's say, two fixed burst. Uh, that's, again, about 10 seconds or so. Uh, for one second of fire. And what I'm trying to get across here is that for one second of fire, you're probably looking at tens of seconds of evasion to regen that damage back. Personally, I don't think it makes a difference here with the class 7s and the class 8s because these are on big ships. These are on your Corvettes, your Anacondas. Uh, your your cutters. And these ships are hard to miss because of how big they are. Uh, this, by the way, this damage is optimal range, 500 meters for most of these. So, again, it, it's hard to miss at that range. You're not going to regenerate your shields because you're going to be constantly taking damage in the fed vet, in the cutter. I, I, I'm not going to try too, too many builds here. Again, you can play with it on your own. Uh, but the point I want to get across here is that you're going to be taking damage that requires tens of seconds to regen the full. So the time to regen one salvo is in the tens of seconds. If you do decide to be evasive, you're probably not firing at the enemy, but they're still firing at you. And it's like when you're playing FPS. Noob habit is to run when you start taking damage. 
but trying to run away just leaves your back wide open to the enemy. At least in Apex, I can just find a rock to hide behind, find some cover. In Elite, there are usually no rocks to hide behind. Like, unless you're fighting in an asteroid belt, unless you're at a resource extraction site, you're not getting cover. If your enemy is running gimbaled weapons, you will likely require chaff to evade them. If they're running hitscan weapons, and which they are, because most of these weapons are hitscan, with the exception of the PA, all I needed to do is mouse over you. I don't think this is the biggest ask on the attacker's part. So again, I don't, I don't think the regen plan is the best plan. And again, if the shields are hit, not if they take a threshold of damage, if they take any damage, you have to wait two seconds for passive regen. This means that the enemy only needs to pepper you from outside of optimal range to prevent your shield regen. Easily done with a, a, beam, a beam laser. For this next section, I, I can't provide a hard number because shield strengths are different on a ship-to-ship -ship basis. However, we can consider how much damage and regen you need to take to make up for the difference. Now remember, if your shield is at 100%, its regen is zero for all shields. Another way to think about the cost of biweaves is to see how much shield you need to regen to make up the difference in shield capacity. A way to visualize this is through example, of course. So, let's say I have two shields. One has a regen of 5, the other has a regen of 1. We need to regen 100 damage due to the difference in shield strength. This takes shield A 20 seconds. During that time, had shield B taken the same damage, shield B would have regen 20 damage. So as far as shields go, shield A has yet to break even. Shield A must regen the 20 damage that shield B did, so that takes another 4 seconds. But during this time, shield B regen another 4 damage. So we do it one more time, it only takes one second, and we say, that's good enough for government work. So for shield A to be better than shield B, shield A has to regen 124 damage. And if we assume that it is the most efficient about this, then it does it all in one go. Since every time it takes additional damage, it takes another two seconds for that passive regen to kick in. For those unconvinced, I can prove it with a quick example. Let's say we need to regen 100 damage. I've opted to show you how it can be done in four ways. We can regen 100 damage once, 50 damage twice, 20 damage five times, and 10 damage 10 times. The time to do this is displayed on the screen for an arbitrary shield. For anyone wondering what my equation for break-even regen is, it looks like this. 1 plus 1 over the difference of the, rate, of the regen rates. Uh, multiplied by the difference in capacities. Regen time is the same as always. It's 2 plus damage divided by the regen rate. Anyway, uh, back to break-even calculations. Uh, provided a comparison with a bunch of ships. I've selected what I think are the best combat ships for each shield class. Uh, the caveat I'm trying to make here is that you need to remember that shield values are different ship to ship. So if you're not using one of these four ships, you'll have different values, but hopefully they demonstrate the point. Results, here they are. In general, every utility slot you can put a shield booster in makes it that much worse for buy weaves. If you're using shield boosters, it's better to just not use buy weaves. And just a reminder that these are the best case scenarios. In that you take the damage and you regen it up most efficiently. Every time you take a hit, you need to add two seconds to the counter. So let's say you're fighting, you regen the ten of the ten seconds of the break-even damage, but you got hit eight times. You're now at a six-second deficit, and you have to regen the additional damage. In general, when you use by weaves, you will have to take enough damage to require between one and three minutes of avoiding damage to break even. Before people start asking about SCBs, SCBs just add a flat sum to your shields. 
The only thing that it would change would be the difference calculation. But since we're adding, we would be adding the same amount of shields to both, this, this SCBs would cancel out. That said, because SCBs provide so much shield, the only way that things skew in the favor of biweaves is if you only let the biweaves have the SCBs. But when you're running a shield tank build, you're probably using prismatics with SCBs. Which means that kind of comparison is not only unfair, it's also unrealistic. Oh, but you didn't consider resistances or engineering. Damn right I didn't consider engineering. Resistances and engineering make things worse for the bi-weave defenders. Resistances have diminishing returns and a cap. Damage does not. Engineering damage can quickly outpace engineering resistances. So, unless you're spending minutes between combat with less than 50% shield, and it definitely is 50% shield once we start considering shield boosters, waiting for it to regen the full again. I'm going to recommend switching to basic or prismatics if you can fit it into your build. In CZs, I typically spend seconds between engagements. It's not enough for the bi-weaves to mean anything. From personal experience, I run out of ammo before I run out of prismatic shields. And if for some reason I'm flying like a monkey and my prismatics go down, I just reboot, repair, get that 50% back. Basically, once again, broken regen rate literally matters nothing to me. Now look guys, I was there too. I didn't know what I was doing. I'd go online, ask, what shield should I be using for combat? And I was always recommended the biweaves with the justification that you just never took damage because you were always regenerating. I never did the math, just took community wisdom on faith. But after my friend got into the game, we decided to start looking at the hard numbers. Now, based on the numbers, I, I just don't think you can use regen as your justification. You're more than welcome to use biweaves if you like them. But there's a pretty big ask when it comes to using the biweaves to say that they are better than other shields. But I think I've pretty much completed my thesis here with that. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. Even if you disagree with my conclusion, I hope I managed to teach you something new or at least open your eyes to a different alternative. Uh, once again, I uh, provided a copy of the spreadsheet in the description. You're more than welcome to download it, play with it. If I've made any mistakes in the math, feel free to comment them and I'll fix my sheet, possibly change my mind. With all that out the way, peace out, my dudes.